All right, we are here for another spray sealing video. I have two different sprays. The Krylon UV Resistant Clear. Uh, it's, this one's the gloss. I believe it comes in both gloss and matte. Okay. And I also have just a Krylon Workable Fixative. It's a workable fixative because it um, sprays on matte and you're able to apply things like um, dry media right over the top of it. So if you want to build up layers of things like uh, charcoal, pastels, chalks, uh, graphite, etc., you can use this on it, seal off what you've already kind of established and work on it even more. Where um, sometimes if you're working with those types of uh, materials, if you keep building it up, what en ends up, you know, you end up doing is wiping some of it off. So you seal off and you work in layers. Okay, now that's not what we're going to be doing here, but um, I'm going to be using the workable fixative for um, matte um, surfaces, okay? And I don't know, sometimes it's kind of in between. This is kind of more of a matte surface in the, uh, the Mohawk Everyday Digital white coated silk paper, but some of the media though is kind of glossy, so I'm not really sure which one to do in those instances, because if you spray it with a workable fixative, that gloss finish on things like those alcohol inks in there will tend to look a little bit more matte, okay? So I don't know, you can just kind of decide. My Pretty much my go-to one is the UV resistant clear though, that's what I've been using, but I, I picked up some of this workable fixative because I was starting to do a lot more, um, or a few more I should say. Uh, matte uh, finished pieces. Okay, so that being said, you always want to shake these up adequately before working with them. On this one I have a um, just a, a spray can uh, trigger type of holder. They go by different names. You can just call it uh, like spray paint can holder or something like that or handy grip. It, every manufacturer has a different uh, term for it. Okay, now, let's see. I hope we can see some of the uh, changes that occur when I spray these. Some inks are... This, this one right here is already really bright, so I think the only thing I'm going to really be accomplishing is sealing, but we'll see if some of the uh, colors get a little bit more intense and saturated with the spraying of it, okay? Okay, standard um, types of... Uh, uh, spray can uh, pr procedures here. You want to spray from distance and you kind of start spraying. You can do it in bursts like this. Actually those colors up there are getting more saturated. Or you kind of st start off your um, scene and go on to it like this, okay? You don't you usually want to start, you know, spraying continuously like that otherwise you're going to get a big puddle of it and it, and it could kind of drip. You know, if you do that, so be it. But um, if you can't avoid it, then just uh, avoid it as much as possible. Okay, so. All right, that one, I don't know, that one did increase in intensity. I'd say at least, I don't know, maybe 5% or something like that. I do have some areas on all of the scenes that I'll be doing today where I've used the white pigment ink. It kind of dries like a chalky surface, so if you spray it too heavily, that will tend to disappear. If it does happen like that, and you want more of that, then just apply it after the sealing, okay? And just build it up a little bit more. So, you know, it, you know you, you're not stuck with something, okay? After you spray seal it, you can always go back and kind of uh, work on it a little bit more. Some media you can't, but things like the white pigment ink, it's no problem. Okay, now, these do dry reasonably fast, okay? Especially if you just spray it off with a light spray. I'm going to be trying to work through these pretty fast because I do have a lot of them. This one right here, people were saying um, uh, they might like it, but they can't tell where the ripples are. I don't know if you can see on this one, but these are really raised right here. You probably can't tell in the video, but this is this whole ridge right here is raised, and this is the vellum piece, and here's this big ripple right here. Okay, but anyways, on this vellum piece, I think that... The workable fixative is kind of called for. I wouldn't really see spraying this one with a gloss, you know, because it's not that type of surface, so we want to kind of um, retain the integrity of the um, surface here. And, you know, matte, um, you know, a matte surface has a certain degree of a kind of textural charm to it, okay? 
I'm kind of curious about this one, you know, as far as um, if it would change. I think some of that texturing in there, I think the vellum got a little bit more transparent when I sprayed it just now. You know, just a, kind of a minor degree. Like over here, I think I could see um, the darkness of the, uh, the paper that's underneath it a little bit more. But there is a lot of white pigment ink on this, so that pigment ink is kind of moving more towards transparency. So we can probably see through that. Maybe that's what happened on this one, you know, to some degree. All right, it's really loud out here, but I have to spray these pieces when there is no breeze. So I came out and I thought, oh my gosh, it's there's no breeze. I got to jump on this. So there's lawn mowers going on in the background. I apologize about that, but that's better than having a breeze. And you know, my pieces, you just, you spray it, then it flips on the ground, and then you know before it dries and it's all kind of wet. Okay, so um, uh, foil pieces, we have our blue foil and our gold foil right here. We really have to spray these ones off because that media on there um, did not stick permanently. I mean, it, you know, it's not going to rub off if I kind of do that, but if I rub it really hard or something like that, that ink, it would be prone to um, kind of being uh, removing, all right? Um, and the, these ones are brilliance inks, by the way, which are fast drying. Um, water-based pigment inks, okay? I'm going to spray that with a gloss, I think. Um, this does change the surface of it a little bit because, it, you know, you put that light spray on there and it kind of gives it a little bit more of a frosty feel. doesn't really show up too much on the, uh, the blue foil because it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more matte, but this one's a real kind of, I don't know, almost like a chrome, gold chrome, you know, really shiny and whatnot, so this, this one it would, um, in a spray ceiling, it does uh, affect it a little bit more. Now, what we want to do is we want to, uh, we don't want to uh, change um, these inks too much, the black and white brilliance on here, so I'm giving it just a quick spray and a very light one, and we'll just leave it at that. You know, some types of uh, spraying, we might be doing it to um, kind of regain or increase the intensity and saturation of layered dye base colors. But on this one, we're just um, spraying to um, to protect and to seal. Now this one, okay, this one right here, this one's on a glossy card stock. Let me grab a couple glossy card stock pieces. And let's see how much... Um, been working with a lot of matte here, so I don't know. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. Well, there's one glossy, okay. I've been working with a ton with the white coated silk. Okay, another uh, gold piece and uh, glossy, okay. That one I have a feeling because of the saturated layered tones. That one could potentially change quite a great, you know, quite a good deal. Let me do half of this one so you can see, okay. Now, especially look in the blacks right there, but even like the oranges and whatnot are quite a bit different from uh, the left to right, okay? So, um, no matter what brand of inks you're using and, and what paper combinations, um, spray sealing can often be the great equalizer to all of it. You know, uh, Marvy inks don't fade out like that with drying, okay? They're not really fading, they're just kind of drying to a dull sheen, but all you do is you just hit it, and it brings back what's already there. It just doesn't have this kind of this frosted um, type of surface on it that's kind of um, obscuring, you know, the, uh, the potential um, saturation of a uh, of the colors there, okay? It just makes it look so much better. Okay, this one's uh, another piece on the gold foil, so I'll hit it very lightly. All right, and that should do it right there. The, these ones don't change too much. I mean, uh, I'm being a little bit more careful that, uh, you know, with this one, uh, with the gold foils this time. Sometimes I've sprayed a little bit too much and it's, uh, I don't know, I lose a lot of the, uh, the white, delicate, uh, you know, uh, appearance of uh, some of the lighter um, white pig uh, pigment ink applications. All right, here's another one here. Um, gold foil. Um, 
Uh, here's a vellum right here. I have so many different types of things. Okay, here's another. Um, this one's glossy right here. Okay. This one right here is a little bit different this time because I, I've used a lot of the acrylic paint pen on this one. There's the dye base inks down here, but the acrylic paint pen. Let's see how um, it affects the acrylic paint pen. Okay, that one's the gold. And let's do this one. Let's go with the left side spraying on this one and see if we can see any change at all. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so I'll hit the left side. It got a little bit more saturated. I don't know if it did too much. Yeah, that does look a little bit darker, doesn't it? Okay, let's try it on the, uh, the right side, and let's see if that indeed did get a little bit darker up in the paint area. But there's a lot of um, dye based ink underneath the, uh, the paint here, too, so maybe that's the thing that got darker. Not a huge difference there, because, you know, like I said, there's a lot of paint then going up there. The acrylic, I don't think, changed too much. Okay, I always forget to zoom out in these vents. Okay, this one is a vellum piece. I know it's hard to tell because I've um, applied the vellum on top of just a piece of uh, cardstock, okay? Well, let's go with the vellum. Let's go with the, uh, the workable fixative, okay? Always spray these outside. Don't spray it indoors. It's, it's not good to breathe all this. I do believe there's a slight change in that. Not huge, though. Okay, let's see. All right, I have several of the white coated silk right here. Okay. Now, I don't want to change the uh, kind of the matte nature of these pieces, but I do want the saturations to become a little bit stronger. So we'll use the workable fixative. Okay, just sprayed that. I had to pause there briefly. The neighbor's uh, taking out the trash or something. Um, the colors in my shadow areas, especially on this piece right here, got much more saturated. Okay, so, um, you know, the spray sealant, um, it saturates, but again, this is a workable fixative, so. This. This, I don't know, is this on glossy? No, I'm looking at it. This one might have been on glossy. I thought it was on the, uh, the white coated silk. But, uh, I don't know. You can use either. Alright. And by the way, when I'm doing all these types of things, I, you know, I experiment around with a lot of stuff. I, you know, this isn't like the gospel of spraying or something like that in terms of what to use and what not to use. A lot of times the things that I'm using in my videos I'm using just because I happen to have it. Um, I'll tell you if it doesn't work, though. You know, but sometimes there's certain things that work, and there are things that might work even better, but I just don't know about it because I don't have it, and I don't, you know, bother really getting it. Okay, now this one right here is a piece on uh, vellum, okay? And then I mounted it and kind of mounted it on the... Uh, gold foil it would really be better if I sprayed this and then mounted it on that gold foil but you know when I'm working on those videos I just want to finish some pieces sometimes and I don't have time to wait for it to dry or whatnot one angel is stamped on the top and the other angel is stamped on the bottom just to create a little bit more depth I, the, on this piece it really isn't very I don't know apparent you know in terms of that dynamic the front and back vellum but, uh, I don't know, maybe it works in a very, uh, very subtle way. Okay. 
All right, we have three winter scenes that looks almost look like looks like it could be a triptych. It could be a triptych, triptychs are you know three pieces that are kind of designed to be um, shown in conjunction. It wouldn't really be a triptych because you have two of the exact same or almost the same compositions. But uh, uh, let's hit it with the uh, the workable fix it up again. See, that's a little, quite a bit darker on that side. Let's go with the left side on all of them. So, hope you can see a little bit of a difference. I don't know if you can see it in the video, if the video is capturing it or not. But let's hit it again. Sometimes I don't hit the middle too much, you know, because there's not much media in there to uh, really seal off or to saturate even more so you know you can just hit the perimeters or wherever you've uh, applied most of your uh, inks i think this is usually when i'm doing these spray sealing videos there's no breeze and then suddenly when i get in position to uh to spray suddenly the breeze kicks up <laughs> but uh, this is pretty good today okay look okay now this one we'll be able to tell a big difference, I'm assuming. Okay, uh, white hooded sulk, and doing a uh, aurora borealis type of theme. I'm kind of deciding if I want to do this on glossy. Let's just do it in matte, you know, st stick with that uh, kind of formula. Matte on kind of matte. Oops. You see that? Look at that difference right there. It's huge, isn't it? And I, when this dries, it should dry with that um, degree of saturation. Sometimes it's a little bit less than, you know, when this is sprayed. But um, the, I'm telling you, if you, you know, one of these cans like this um, can really change the spirit of all your pieces, okay? It just increases. Let's say if you can improve, you know, you have 50 different stamp pads out there, but you have one can of something that can improve the look of all of those, and plus your markers and everything like that, you know, I think it's worth getting and uh, worth doing. I don't know, give it a try sometime. And, uh, you know, these things are readily available at any art store or whatever, chain stores, online, etc. Okay. This one right here, photo stamping, I don't think I really need to spray this, but why not? I don't believe it's going to change anything, but let's take a look. Maybe those black impressions are now two degrees darker. I don't know, I don't think so, though. Uh, be a little bit careful with certain types of um, spraying, though. This is probably done in the Brilliance Black, which is a water-based pigment ink, but if you're spraying like a pigment ink that's, um, or a, a, an ink like a Stazon or something like that, the, um, the binder in this could, if you spray it too thick, it could put that binder or that ink back into solution and make it run. So that's why we hit it with kind of light um, coats, okay? That, that dry very quickly. So if you're out in a day that where things are drying very slowly, then just be careful about that. Okay, tons of the Emoki uh, paint pen, three millimeter, which are really thick paint pens, okay? It got a little bit brighter there, but what it's doing is it's probably making the, uh, the white pigment ink that I applied in there a lot more transparent so that the colors are showing through, okay? Which is good to some degree, but I do want a lot of that white pigment ink um, kind of foggy effect in here still. So, if you know, if I spray and I get rid of too much of that, then that wouldn't be good. Okay, this is just a, a little test piece right here. I was trying um, um, the aspen trees on uh, gold right here with the uh, paint pens, okay? And that's star green gold. There's some kids playing in the background. You might be picking some of that up, but I don't know. Kids playing, that's music to my ears. The traffic in the background, that's not a good sound, though. Okay, another um, piece on vellum right here. 
Okay, just give it a light coating. I really like that vellum, um, birch tree type of uh, look here. Uh, it's like the way to use the birch trees now that I'm doing that with the uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Okay, I've been really, really busy. Here's another birch tree uh, vellum piece. Um, oh my gosh, this one's a vellum piece that I haven't even mounted yet. Oh, this is the back side of it. This is the way it goes right here. I'll, I'll mount this up first before I do it. Oh, and here's my, uh, my uh, winter piece with the uh, kind of the hidden uh, image in there. And this is my first vellum piece ever that I tried. Um, trying to stamp on the, both the back and the front, experimenting, and that's um, kind of evolved here. So let's get that sprayed. Okay. Some kids having fun. That is always a good sign. Hear that or not? Uh, this is another vellum piece. I get obsessed with, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, media combinations, especially if I get some results that I like. This one right here is where the trees, uh, the cypress trees, are stamped in the uh, the front of the vellum, but the um, the, uh, the bayou house is stamped. It was. I think it was, okay, that, the Bayou House was stamped on a piece of paper, cardstock, in the back, okay, and, and but the vellum was laid over it, so that is stamped in black as well, but because this vellum is translucent, it looks much farther back in the distance. These ones, you know, because I stamp it in the brilliance, I don't think it really needs to be sprayed, but it's always a good idea to kind of maybe put a little bit of coating over it to like seal off the uh, the pigment, those little glowing little firefly areas there, which could potentially rub off. I mean, you know, the way, you know, unless it's being handled a lot, it's not going to rub off, but uh, I don't know, it just seals it off a little bit more. Sometimes the best sealant job is one where, you know, you really can't tell if anything's been done. It's just, you know, the, the sealant just is practically Invisible. Okay, tons more um, uh, vellum pieces here. Those trees in the distance, you know, or in the background, are on the back of the vellum. And I'm using the workable fixative again, so no change at all, but just protected, sealed. Another one right here. I, I was obsessed with the birch trees. I've had those for years, but I haven't really used them very much until I found this kind of combination here that really works really well. It's like the real... And then I also have the uh, the paint pens, too, which, I don't know, it's finally like some media combinations are available to all of us. Okay, this one's the vintage paper. Just using uh, black ink. I used a little bit of white ink on it, too. Uh, white pigment ink, okay. Which is like white, you know, uh, vintage, you know, paper, text white paper stationery that you can print things on and whatnot to make it look aged, but why not stamp on it? It's a, really, it's a good way to do, like, a really fast scene. Okay, this is one of my... Okay, I think this one might have been the three-layer vellum. Nah, I, I don't remember. It's like I can't even tell, but a lot of deep space with the use of translucency, you know, which is the vellum surface. I love it. Vellum, of course, has been around for a very long time. I just, I don't know, I just hadn't tried it. I knew about the techniques before, you know, because I had customers that, uh, or a customer that did that, where they, she stamped on both sides and used colored pencils, and I always loved the look, but I just never got around to trying it. Okay, this one is a <laughs> really long slimline piece there. Okay, um, this is done in Marvy inks, so the saturation is already there, but let's see if we can get those inks to really um, pop.
pop even more. <coughs> A little bit more saturated, a little bit more intense, a little bit more deep. Okay, and that's what we're going for with these colors. So sometimes if you, even if it's like a three to five percent change or something like that, it you know, it, it can affect things. And when you do spray things like that, sometimes the uh, the little um, bleed proof white splatter painting white kind of shows up a little bit more. This was a really fun technique right here. Vellum over a photograph in the background. I actually used two, three photographs in the background because uh, I didn't have one large enough to fill in that space. But when you put it over the vellum, it's like it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even show, you know, um, in terms of it not being one piece. You know, you can get away with a lot more. Oops, that was glossy. No problem. Spray that with the mat. Yeah, the mat, the mat looks pretty good on there. It did bring out the intensity of those trees a little bit. It's because it's bringing out the intensity of the, um, the dye-based ink uh, base print for those uh, aspen trees. God, that vellum can really create a lot of depth. Okay. Man, there's a lot of pieces here. Okay fairly recent piece on the uh, white coated silk. This one was more colored pencils. I think this one's... Okay, look at the difference between these two right here. This one's more dye-based inks, and this one's colored pencil right here. Now, I did put in the, uh, the light beans, and it's done in a different color scheme, but, um, you know, two really similar compositions right here, but just uh, treated differently in terms of the, uh, the color scheme, the lighting scheme, etc. of all that. The more inks you use, um, the more kind of benefit spraying um, can introduce because there's just more layers to reveal um, when sprayed. It's like if someone stained wood, you know, suddenly the, uh, the grains and depth of the wood become much more apparent when you do that. And that's kind of uh, what's going on when you uh, spray seal your scenes. Okay, another piece on vellum you start doing some of this, it's like, I didn't realize I had done so much here. Oh, and I have another scene that I need to finish off. I didn't realize I put it in my finished pieces here. Okay, so these are, vel let's see, eh, that one's, okay, that one I didn't know if it was on glossy or not. It's because the alcohol inks that I've used on the tree are so glossy in terms of the finish that I thought, might be on a glossy uh, card stock. Okay. All right. This one's real frosted. I'm not going to do too much to that. Would it really light on there? Oh, and this one was about the uh, the uh, the cloud, you know, photo in the background. I love that vellum over clouds or things like that. I have yet to do something like a sunset or something like that, but I think that would be really spectacular. Okay, I need to pause this video sometime. <laughs> Stack up all my pieces. Here's a glossy card stock. Piece like that. Let's see. Okay, let's spray a little bit on top. I don't know, there's some glare on it, I know, so... But let's hit it with a gloss, okay? Watch this down here. Change, or, you know, become a little bit more saturated. Alright. I love those blue tones like that. It's probably using about four different blue colors, okay? Um, if someone looked at this and saw that light blue in there, they would think, okay, the light blue is out here, and the dark blue is out here. 
they don't realize that light blue is underneath that and that's what's giving it that real saturated glow is having those um, lighter tones under the darker tones okay all right um, just a little bit of a fencing there I forgot to finish this piece off I put it in my finished work I can't wait to do that one glossy card glossy matte glossy <laughs> Okay, it's getting darker here too. Sounds like the kids uh, down the hill are having some fun. Let's just speed this up right here. I'm just going to use, uh, let me just use the workable fixative on all three of these ones right here. again about all that traffic noise but you got to spray when you you got to spray when you can I've been waiting I've had these it's kind of sitting next to our backyard backyard door for a, I don't know like a week okay this one is the star dream right here with the, uh, the glow-in-the-dark moon um, I really like that effect in fact I just ordered some of those glow-in-the-dark stars you know that you would put like on a kid's uh, kind of bedroom ceiling or something like that. And I'm going to use them in a, a scene. Um, I got the bluish ones. This one's more of that greenish tinge, but they had uh, available either the greenish, stars in greenish tinges like that, or in a blue one. So I thought I'd go with the blue. I thought it would match my pieces more. All right. Yeah, that got, yeah, that made my star dream um, just bare paper, darker. Okay. I was thinking, uh, you know, you wouldn't really be spraying that one, but I don't think it hurts it, though. Okay, a piece of um, the uh, holographic foil, okay, on that one. That one um, was a new kind of technique, and this one right here, I love the, uh, the vellum stamped um, aspens, okay. So both of these, uh, I learned a lot with both of these pieces. Okay, so let's go with the matte on this one. Okay, and let's go with the uh, gloss on the uh, rainbow holographic. Okay. And I'll just give it a light spray like that. Alright, I learned a lot with those pieces there. Or, I don't know, learn new techniques, okay? Here's some more of the, the vintage right here. I need to mount that on something because it's real flimsy. And we're almost done. Okay. This one doesn't really need too much at all. And you know, I won't say it really needs anything. Oh! Well, that is it. I'll show you what I've done here. Let's see, let's zoom out. And I'll show you what we've done here. Okay, I'll show you what you've sat through. Hopefully it wasn't too painful to watch. Well, I guess you're still here, so sprayed all those, okay. And then I have these two boxes right here, you know, where I've placed them in. Save your kind of old boxes like that to put them in. And here's some of the uh, the other pieces right over here, so. Um, like I said, these dry pretty fast, so I don't know if I'll need the boxes. Sometimes the boxes are really convenient if there's a little bit of a breeze, and I just drop them in there so they won't flop over while, you know, still a little bit wet. I've wrecked some pieces like that before where they one is flopped onto another one and you can't really separate them without kind of tearing them so you know just be careful about that but usually just try to stay uh, spray on a uh, you know as breezeless today as possible or one of the things you can do too is you you put them into a box like this you know the flaps on it like you know like so and then you spray all your pieces just in the boxes which are what I've done but I've wanted to shoot this video of the uh, the uh, process. Okay, so anyways, thanks so much for watching, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again.